Hey guys, and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included, Clay's amazing space colony simulator extraordinaire. My name is Twitchy, and we're back in the Rock Full of Braids, a collection of asteroids out in the wilds of space, where we have about 16 duplicates trying to make their ways into the future as comfortably as possible. And do you know what doesn't make life very comfortable? Lots of carbon dioxide. There is lots of carbon dioxide all over my bases. Over here, you can see we've got carbon dioxide down the bottom. Pyaxlin, we actually need to do something about the, uh, the building up carbon dioxide, try and deal with some of the gases down here as well. And would you believe even Blagolia, where we were extracting carbon dioxide, now has somewhere else. So we need to go around and do all of these things as well as some others. And one of the other things I think I need to do is come along up uh, to the top of Reverse and where we've been draining the magma from this ocean that we have on top of our asteroid. It has taken us the best part of 1500 cycles. This was all full of magma. As you can see, we have magma up the very, very top reaches of the base here and it has been draining down 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 into this nice little machine that we have that cools everything down and turns it into food for our hatches down here and i feel like it's time that we can actually seal this in oh hello there uh, kelvin how are you doing uh, i'm going to uh, grab an insulated tile i'm going to make it out of uh, a problem i was going to say obsidian we're nearly out of obsidian maybe we're not going to make it out of obsidian let's make it out of um igneous rock is food let's granite granite why not and i'm just going to start sealing in the roof up here i do believe it's we're finally at the point where we can start taking over this area as part of our base as opposed to part of a space so that's a nice easy one to do the next one i wanted to do was to put some sort of co2 scrubber in down below here we've got one on this side of the base. wait 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 i know there it is there it is we've got one on this side of the base uh, it takes nice clean water into itself eats any of the carbon dioxide that is uh, kicking around turns that water into polluted water which then gets cleaned and it's just a nice little round and round cycle and i'd like to build one of those over here the problem is power is an issue if i press this nice little f2 button it shows us all of the line this big chunky white one is the one that i want you to pay attention to because this is how we carry the majority of the power around my base and we're not able to get through this gap here the problem is this material neutronium is completely undiggable by any duplicate there are other ways of dealing with it wow we've got radiation warnings don't worry we'll be getting to that i didn't know there was a radiation problem over there but we'll find out what that is as I was saying, we want to try and get down here, and I'm, I unfortunately cannot squeeze in between my water tank and that neutronium. So what I'm going to do is ask for some duplicates to come along and build this. Now, unfortunately, this uh, asteroid, uh, whilst full of food and low stress, doesn't actually have someone who likes to build. So we might have to come back and uh, see what's going on with this place. Moving on. In fact, you know what? I'm going to go and see what was going on with Era Gal. This should have been just a small radiation issue. I suspect, I suspect it was something like this area over here where we would like to uh, make this area a little bit nicer for duplicants. And indeed, maybe this main main runway here where lots of duplicants spend a lot of time might be somewhere where we can put a little bit extra... Um, materials between us and space if i do like a, a a new floor there and we dig this area out and then we put down some more ladders i should then be able to just c carry on oh no oh there's stuff in the way i can't layer up here hmm Okay, so we're going to cancel all that, and I'm going to... It's because of the heavy watt wire. I think what I'm going to do is build up here. I believe... I believe this fires up in a straight line past. This little uh, item here fires materials up to our other colonies. And I think if I just... I, th I should be able to build this here. I really should be able to build this here. Let's get a, little, a few more ladders on the go. And then our duplicates should be able to save themselves. A little bit of manual still on the go. We'll definitely have to come back and try and find out. But on Pyaxlin, I've got some notes saying that I need to uh, CO2 filter automation. So let let's have a look at that. So the thing I want to do here is all to do with gas pipes in the background you can see that i have some carbon dioxide i should probably come back another level actually this is my waste pipeline back here you can see it's full of all sorts of waste gases but if we unpause the game it's unfortunately not going anywhere uh, because one of the things i do with my waste gases is dump all of the carbon dioxide into this room so that it can be eaten by my slicksters turned into oil 
oil turns into petroleum, petroleum to power, etc, etc. You can see we've got a lot of slicksters in here, and you know, they may be overcrowded and cramped, but they are getting through a lot of carbon dioxide, and of course we have the um, ranch slicksters down here that are eating a lot, but still, even still, uh, because I am connected, if we go back to reversing, to this uh, carbon dioxide vent over here, this gets pumped out and through a teleport device, which then comes over to Pyaxlin, this one here, and uh, pumps it up into this room. So I, um, I can no longer pump materials out of here this gas vent is over pressure and uh, it will not let carbon dioxide out so i want to be able to turn this gas filter on and off i don't know whether yeah we can enable and disable the building but my big question my big question is if we disable the building does it in fact start to let gases through because i can unselect the filter and it will let any and all gases passed. Now, th this is what I've been doing relatively regularly for the, the past sort of five, six hundred cycles. <laughs> yeah, I, it really has been that long. Um, so I, I'd like to see if there is a way that I could detect the amount, if, if, if there's any gas in this pipe and shut this down. So I'm going to turn that back to carbon dioxide. It's going to, um, again, lock up. That, that's not ideal, but not the biggest of problems. And I'm going to get a little bit of automation wire, and I'm just going to drop that right, maybe, maybe not not with my uh, precious precious tungsten we'll just do a little bit of gold we'll just drop that right there and we'll see if when this automation wire gets it put in place whether the carbon dioxide will just flow past Okay, Curie coming along with the materials here, and it's turned off now. Unfortunately, unfortunately, that is not the case. Mm, I wonder how we can get past it then. Yeah, because it won't even pump now that it is disabled. Okay, that, that does make sense. That does make sense. I was just hoping. I was just hoping that it was another way. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of that little bit of aut uh, automation wire there. I'm going to leave it on none for the moment. And I'm going to have to come back and think about it. I can't really come up with a good plan for now. We do, however, have a nice little bit of building going on back on reversing. This is the first place we are at. I should be able to now come along and deconstruct these tiles underneath here and start getting the uh, the final part of this uh, this power spline through. I've been working on this for a very long time. This was one of the first things we did when we set up uh, 1500 cycles ago. Uh, so it'll be uh, very interesting to see this all actually get finished. Oh, Plank has come along to do it. That's even better. We finally, for the first time in thousands of cycles, let this hatch free. I'm sorry. It's pro it's probably going to die. That, that That's what normally happens to randomly, randomly roving wild critters around here. <laughs> But whilst once again we're waiting for that to happen, back over on Blagolia, I said we were having some troubles over here pumping carbon dioxide. If we go up and have a look at the top, you can see that there is so much troubles that the mushrooms that we're using to sustain our base are in fact stifled. Uh, this, this is a problem. Uh, not only is it uh, pressure problems, but also body temperature problems. Thankfully, thankfully, pumping stuff from down the bottom here will solve both of those issues because this used to be the lowest part of our base, but now there's other lower parts of our base. So we we need to move this entire setup that we have here with a, uh, a gas pump and a, a, a line going out. I bet we can actually redirect. Let's, let's do this right here. want that and then pull this down here. We should be able to build straight past the rover. I don't think we're going to have any troubles destroying the tile that he has sat on. Uh, and then bring this down into this space somewhere like here. I really do want to go all the way all the way down here. There we go. That wasn't a misplace at all. Uh, grab ourselves a copy of the pump i'm gonna have to take these ladders out that's unfortunate or indeed we could rework the heavy watt wire and then we could put the pump down there that that that's my plan that's my plan but this is a, this is a long line we're gonna have to wait for the duplicates to get to that how is the deconstruction going oh wait night time's been called and we we don't have night shift set up for here no, none of my individual places have anywhere near enough duplicates to warrant that many um schedules so we, we just we just go through and uh let them have the normal day shift. Over here, let's see how the Saturn Critter Traps are doing. They're still too hot. That is a shame. I thought we were doing much, much, much better at cooling this place down. So this little setup at the top here is to deal with our overpopulation of pips. These, these uh, Saturn Critter Traps, weird little, uh, little plants here, they will eat any animal that walks on the floor. 
Uh, see, it sounds a little savage, but we, we need to deal with the overpopulation coming from, like, all of these pips down here. These pips are little cat-like creatures that like to uh, harvest the, the wood from these trees. The wood I turn into ethanol when we, we power our base off of it. Um, but if we have too many, they cramp themselves out and then they don't like eating the wood anymore. Uh, all I've gone ahead and done is drop the, the temperature by another 10 degrees. And let's see if the ambient temperature will drop down far enough. I am a little bit worried about the fact that we're trying to chill down this that's exposed this this hydroponic tile here that is exposed to the air maybe there's a way of chilling the water down instead Okay, so this is very obviously a major part of the issue here. You can see the water coming in climbs up to like 20 degrees over this way. There are, there are places where it's not quite so hot because uh, the hydrogen is coming around in the background and trying to cool it down. But I think we can fix this. Uh, we should have plenty of gold. Not as much as I would have liked, but we have enough gold to be able to run this down here. Uh, and then it should start exchanging its heat with the environment, which is not the, uh, the coolest place in the uh, entire base, but... But there are cool there is cooling going around and hopefully everything will just come down another couple of degrees. Back on reverse Lynn, what are we doing? How are we doing? Still still not Doug. Let's, let's get the digging Doug. Okay, back on reverse Lynn. And oh sorry, Pi Axlin. I have been coming up with a better plan for the CO2. It's still not a plan that I like, if I'm to be honest with you. But we're gonna have this gas pipe element sensor here looking for carbon dioxide. When it detects too much carbon dioxide, just as it did, this automatic notifier down here via the magic of this uh, automation wire has given me a too much carbon warning. And we come in and it's paused the game, it zoomed me in, and I can come along here and I go, I don't want any of that, please. I set the no. Uh, then, when this dete doesn't detect carbon dioxide, we'll swap back over and let that run. You can see the less CO2 turns up. Now, this would be, if you could imagine, this pipe had just emptied out. Uh, so that then I can come along click this and go carbon dioxide like i say it's not a system that i really enjoy having in my base i would much prefer if i could work with the uh, the gas filter directly to let it bypass or not uh, but i don't have a lot of room for a bypass uh, to, to, to actually just install a bypass if I come into the ventilation uh, I could have used a gas shutoff valve is this the one that works with the automation and then just let it flow up and pass but there's a pretty serious ladder that's part of my base here that is like the ladder that everybody uses so I can't really get rid of it yeah I know two bucks carbon dioxide thank you thank you for letting me know back to reverse Lynn yeah we've got the digging underway this is good this is good okay so in that case we're going to start thinking about where we're going to be putting stuff much like the carbon skimmer over here i think we can just dump it here is there, is there any reason not to i'm tempted to put it above the um the, the oxy ferns down there that we've got but I, I i feel like actually we could just throw it here Let, let's let's put down a mesh tile i, I did um and r for a second there you could definitely see me doing that uh we'll do something like what material have i just eaten through well no, no we're not we're not using all my steel don't <laughs> We're going to make copper, Cop copper ore ones. That's that's entirely what we're making out of. Beautiful. Uh, and then somewhere down here, refinement and also the water sieve. These are the two things we need to combine together. It's a little bit of a shame to be taking out this wonderful lump of uh, natural resource that we have here, but we should be fine. Why couldn't people come up and under here? Was there an actual reason? Let's move to... No, 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 there's no reason that they haven't come up and under here. They just decided they wanted to do this first. Okay, that's fine. I can live with that. And whilst we watch Plank and the crew grow around and make their environment better than for themselves, I would like to take this moment right here and tell you about the people that make my environment better for me. That's right, my patrons. Scrolling up the screen right now, you will see a list of names. A list of names of the guys and girls that have gone along to patreon.com forward slash twitchy and made a monthly monetary donation to make sure that me and my channel can continue on into the future in these times of high priorities and many, many distractions. As some of you will know, I am an astrophysics student at the moment and trying to find the priority the times if you will to be able to play this very very long game can be quite difficult but with the support and help of my patreon somehow i manage it every week so from the very very bottom of my heart i am going to say thank you thank you so much 
Okay, with the main pieces of infrastructure in place and my willingness to just sit here and watch them do it, starting to erode just a little bit, I think it's time we start thinking about how we're going to get water out of this system over here and into the cool into not the cooling loop, sorry, the uh, the scrubbing system. Uh, now we can take water out of many places, but I think all I'm going to do is just take a little bit of a pipe. You know, I'm not even going to take an insulated pipe uh, and run it like this. Oh, not, not quite like that. It's going to go down the uh, the ladder and really we want to use a liquid bridge to put the liquids into there. Okay, I uh, that, that that's good. That's, re that's really good. I'm going to cancel that one and not let them change the insulated uh, pipe back there. Whilst they're building all of that, let's go back to, no, not Pyax, into Blagolia because I want to see how this lot is doing. Not, not very well at all, is it? Yeah, okay. Well, I'm just going to hurry this along somewhat. Definitely just starting with the power line here. Oh, it looks like I caught a couple of gas uh, pipes there, but that's no problem because then we can start taking out, not that one, the uh, the heavy watt wire over here and then start working on the gas line properly. Getting the bypass in first is first is definitely the, uh, the priority there. Oh, okay, we can't go through this. We haven't taken this little bit of wire out here. I, I'm really not intending to take it out at all, if I'm to be honest with you. I just want to disconnect everything here and run a big wire up and through like so but if we do that you can see serious problems arise because this is not a, uh, a piece of wire that is ready for such loading yeah, we've got something like four kilowatts going through this wire at all times and uh, the the conductive wire here can only take two so that we, we, we need to avoid that Okay, now that we've got all the wires in place, actually, let's just go ahead and connect that up. Beautiful, beautiful. The next thing I want them to very much do with the highest priorities is this lot here. And uh, let's start with this wire, this uh, tubing at the top. I want to get rid of the wire so that we can put down a pump. But of course, the end of the day has made things kind of awkward. Thankfully, Swan Levitt came along to, uh, to take out the wire that I really needed her to take out. That is good. That's uh, automation. I want to take this little bit of wire out here as well if we can. Uh, but that's going to take a little bit of time that should be no problem though yeah no problem at all New day, new alarm over on Blagolia here. Let's try and get all of these pipes done in uh, the day if we can. Back over at reverse, and we've got a little bit going on over there. None of the pipes are being made. And one thing that I have also noticed is no one's even come up here to think about putting the seal on the top. So, I mean, that, that's fine. The, the carbon dioxide is a bit more of an issue if we press F4. It, it's creeping. It's creeping. It's got all the way up here. I don't know what we've managed to do to stop it filling into this base, this part of our base over here but somehow this is just a, a nice little controlled point of look 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 here's the here's here's the here's the, the point if this water wasn't here this oxygen could just escape up and through okay so that's the problem and it's actually the its own carbon dioxide that's stopping itself from gassing through and that that's weird so this little bubble of oxygen is being held in by its own pressure that that's that's crazy that is crazy Okay, so with the, all of the infrastructure in place, we're going to be selecting for carbon dioxide, so we'll only pick if we've got it. We've got quite a bit here, and this should hopefully be going all the way up the line into the uh, the dust cap uh, farm up there. I'm not too worried. Normally, I would put the gas element sensor a lot further up so that we can guarantee that there was carbon dioxide down here, but I'm not too worried about that because carbon dioxide is such a heavy gas and everything else will float up over the top. But where we've got the um, the door to our mushroom farm at the top here, anything that's not carbon dioxide will just float up and out whilst the carbon dioxide would stay inside. Back on reverse, then, oh, we have got very, very close. Very, very close indeed. Do you reckon I can just actually get them to finish up before the end of the day? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But this might be a winner here. I don't really like doing this to my duplicates, though you wouldn't know that to watch this series. I do it, I do it quite often. But I do prefer if I could just let my duplicates, you know, deal with bodily functions and such as they need to okay this this is good we're actually going to get this going fine uh the only thing i would need to do after this system fills up is to destroy the liquid bridge and because of the way it oh i put this in the wrong place that should totally have been there and then we could have filled up all of this pipe instead of it going through the way it has been but that's fine it will just go around and keep itself topped up uh once it does that we'll rip the pipe out
And indeed, this will probably do it. Even though it doesn't have an awful lot of uh, water into the system. Wait, liquid bridge there. We'll deconstruct that. We, we don't need an awful lot of water in the system. We just need enough to keep passing it around uh, in a loop. And uh, duplicates will come along and put down a bunch of sand for the water sieve to keep it running. We should now be slowly pumping all the carbon dioxide out of here. It's, it's going to take some cycles. It's going to take a few cycles. I suppose I just kind of want to put this back to how it was now. We'll do, we'll do it a block at a time like we were doing with the uh, the magma up here. For those of you that remember pushing the magma around, we'll do the same with the water and uh, hopefully get this back to a nice squared off tank here. Uh, the cleaning is happening back to Pyax. Then we got, got anything going on over here. Well, of course, the automation sensor is doing well, telling us when things are up and running. Uh, the, the whole petroleum boiler doesn't seem to be exploding. I think actually this place is doing incredibly well. Back to Blagolia. This is the place where we've got the, uh, the pump be pumping and it uh, looks like maybe, yes, we're starting to get ourselves much more of the uh, the dust caps growing here. There we go. Th th this one is actually done and achieved. We've, we've finished the thing. Uh, this is also finished of the thing. And by accident... Oh, did we finish all the things? I think I might have finished all the things. There is There was one more, and, and I hope that someone can come along and do uh, it. Yeah, the doors have closed. Okay, that's good. These doors were open, and it was meaning that our um, puffs were passing from back, back and forth. Uh, now I just need to make sure. So these guys are cramped. I think we can just kill the dense ones. We are of course actually farming slime from the polluted oxygen that comes off of these morbs. The puffs will eat the polluted oxygen, turn it into slime, which we then feed to the dust caps. It's a beautiful cyclical system and sometimes these dense puffs will get in the way. It would be nice to actually set up another ranch somewhere for all the other different types of puffs but I think that's fine for now. I would also like to get in and make a little control system for our hydrogen generator over here because uh, we've not been going... Uh, not been using any of our natural gas for power. Oh, we're, we're starting to use some. And the reason that that is important is because we are now producing water but via that natural gas. And uh, the water, this, is, this is our entire water tank here. Oh, no, we don't have any gulp fries. Oh, no. Hmm. We need to chill this water down. I think I do know how to achieve it, but the, the space constraint might be a bit of a problem. There's, there's definitely not as much room here as I would like, but what I'm going to do is run some super chilled hydrogen through the system. Perhaps we'll take out this here. Uh, yeah, let, let's do it. We'll take out this um, manual generator because I don't, I don't think we're ever going to need it again. Oh, it's right on the edge of being overloaded. Of course, it's our power... Our, um, it's our rad bolt generation. I might want to separate that off. In fact, I know I want to separate that off. I've been wanting to separate that off for a long time. So if we could cut this here and here and then come up with another plan on this side. Yeah, unfortunately, everything's just a bit of a tight knot over here for power transformers. We, we, we can figure it out, though. We can figure it out. Okay, here's how we're going to do it. We're going to de deconstruct this little system over here, and then we're going to build another power transformer down one. Uh, this is then going to take over the duties of this line. This would take over the next one up, and we're going to shuffle up to try and make ourselves just a little bit more room to send an extra power wire down and through here. I think, I think that's how it's going to work. In fact, that is how it's going to work. It's going to be beautiful. There will be no way of this not going well. Really, honestly, as, someone, as long as someone can come along and get rid of this triage cop. Okay, that's two rerouted. You can see we built this new one down below. It's connected up to the hydrogen, as I said. Let's uh, get rid of these wires here. They, that is where I broke the system, uh, and we've moved this over uh, this way to power the kitchen and such forth. These wires got broken, and now we should be able to run what used to be the kitchen wires up and into this cooling system slash cleaning system. Uh, if we come into utilities and we go, where are you? Thermo tuner. Uh, we'll just pop that right there. Okay. Okay, beautiful. All right, let's steal all of the hydrogen from here for the moment. I don't know exactly how much it's going to take, but we've got a whole loop that we want to set up here. Uh, also, this um, this gas pump, this gas pipe, sorry, that I am pumping into here is actually going to end up being the bridge that we use to regulate the temperature here. Much like the uh, the normal thermo aqua tuner over here that uses liquid, uh, we can set the temperature that we want at the top here. Now, I want to bring this down somewhere to like five degrees. I don't mind if we pass 
slightly too cold uh, gases through here because we're no way going to bring the water down to zero degrees as more is being added all the time uh, so we'll, we'll ju we're just going to be throwing as cold get well not as cold hydrogen as we can get through that we can bring that hydrogen down to very very cold but if we could take keep it around about zero degrees that should keep us nice and cool now obviously the 50 degree hydrogen here it's not a great start but hopefully the fact that we are oh, disabled by uh, if above zero turn on okay so we, we are we are waiting for the gases and after a small bit of time acceleration here comes our first pass through some of it gets actually passed through some of it does not okay so we are now uh adding up we're with we've got uh, packets of 300 grams going through and now 500 grams so that the these two separate packets are now adding together i'm not sure what that does to the temperature whether it takes the higher temperature the lower temperature or does it mix the two i don't know but we will find out by the end of all of these runs round in fact we are starting to get less and less and less hydrogen right here that's because we're starting to run out okay that that's okay we it could have been better if i'm doing honest with you it could have been better but that, that's okay when's it next erupt we don't know the analysis has not been done. All right, fair enough. It, it's it's soon. Surely it's soon. Well, it's not as much hydrogen as I would have liked, but don't worry, the hydrogen uh, vent is starting to erupt once again. The reason that we're trying to bring the temperature of the water down so much is because we don't want this Paku. We don't want uh, Paku Fry or Tropical. We want the Gulp Fry eggs. And if you have a look at that little tooltip that's uh, popped up there, there is an increased chance of laying Gulp Fried eggs when the water is cold, between minus 30 and 5 degrees. Now, obviously, we've got actual water here. We can't take it down below minus 3, else it will freeze solid into ice and then we'd have to bring it up to three degrees before it would melt again. But I, I think this is going fine and a dandy. Over at Iriga, we started, look, with one of the Saturn Critter Traps is starting to chill out. Uh, we've sealed off the box fully around and that has definitely helped. As long as the hydrogen and oxygen can start bringing down to regular temperatures in here uh, below uh, the, what, what temperature was it we needed to be? Below zero degrees. As long as we can get down to below zero degrees, we can carry on eating the creatures in here. But I think with that, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure adventure ladies and gentlemen today we've gone around and dealt with a whole bunch of carbon dioxide let's see is it starting to come down here it's still just being pumped through as we are talking uh, we have not managed to seal in the top of the base but we're going to leave that running for whoever finds that they have the time to do so we've set up some automatic systems over here to make sure that i can keep an eye on all of the uh, the carbon dioxide levels we have managed to fix our dust cap problem well one of the dust cap problems that we had anyway and move the carbon dioxide I pumped down to the bottom and of course Irigao sorted out the temperatures I will see you guys and next time where we actually um we're going to start be dealing with the uh, the beta hives over here I want to clear this whole area out maybe move the uh, the bees down below so we can start thinking about putting a little um little research reactor over here and start dealing with some serious amounts of radiation but I will see you guys when we're gonna do that bye